There was never marijuana in the Colorado water. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus vindicating farmers, but first, a story we've been covering on Media Monarchy for nearly a decade. And the latest is U.S. Navy banned from using sonar that harms dolphins and walruses. A federal appeals court ruled last Friday that the U.S. Navy was wrongly allowed to use sonar in the nation's oceans that could harm whales and other marine life. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a lower court decision upholding approval granted in 2012 for the Navy to use low-frequency sonar for training, testing, and routine operations. Now, we'll include in the show notes links for just the search term sonar and you'll find stories going back seven eight years on the mediamonarchy.com archives and again that's something we've been following for a long long time you might know that good news next week is the spinoff from the long-running series between myself and james corbett of corbett report new world next week and we try and highlight some of the ways that we are winning and some of the solutions oriented ways to learn our way forward our cover story this week when i saw the story several days ago i said oh wow well the next good news next week i think already has a cover story THC may be tainting Colorado town's water. Authorities say they found signs that a water well had been tampered with after preliminary tests showed the psychoactive chemical in marijuana was present in the drinking water of a small Colorado town of Hugo. No, even the headlines put it with Colorado town's water may be tainted with marijuana chemical. That's a harsh, terrible chemical. But guess what? The update a couple days later, test kits that reported false positives are being returned to the manufacturer to determine why they were defective. Hugo Sheriff's Department Captain Michael Yao said, quote, there was never THC in our water supply. Now this story got lots of coverage because of course it sounds fantastical and of course people can get a good kick out of all oh, the stoners in Colorado, there's so much weed it's in their water. Wired has an article about how much THC it would actually take to contaminate specifically the Hugo water supply and it would take about 5,000 joints. So then multiply that by bigger cities and imagine how much it would take to again contaminate your water. But guess what? There is rocket fuel, cocaine, and pharmaceuticals found in your water. But don't hold your breath for an outcry on that. Again, we'll include links in the show notes and they'll be down in the show notes below. So we'll always remind you to like and share and otherwise promote these videos for us. Let's see, May 7th, 2008, EPA says drink refreshing delicious rocket fuel. And that article was from Danger Room, a blog on Wired that we used to get a lot of stories from back in the Audis on Media Monarchy. Interestingly enough, when I checked that story to prep for this episode of Good News Next Week, episode 28 for the week of July 25th, 2016, I found that they had an addendum update saying, oh, there's research that says rocket fuel atrazine percolate is actually no big deal and it's totally good for you. Wired has the article, as we noted, that said it would take about 5,000 joints to contaminate the water. Let's see if they get leaned on by Big Pharma and they'll add another update saying, oh no, uh, THC is totally dangerous. I like this story because it shines a light on the poisons that are already in your water and how much of an outcry there is. And the reality shakes out that, like Jet LeBioffer said, grow more pot. Our final story on this week's good news next week goes to Rhode Island. Well, actually, the Rhode Island story we already covered. We covered it on a Media Monarchy morning show last week, actually. And again, we'll include show notes to that. But our buddy Brock West tweeted that using hashtag good news next week. Rhode Island legalizes industrial hemp, setting the foundation to nullify the federal prohibition. But our actual third and final story this week, courts indicate vindicate a Pennsylvania Amish farmer for the fourth time. All four actions against the farmer have stemmed from farmer Chris Zooks building a new barn on his farm to replace the original one that burned down in a fire in 2011. But the man rejected to Zook using part of the barn as a private food buyer's club. And you realize the crux of the story isn't so much the building or the structure, it's that you're cutting out the man and they want their tax theft cut and they don't want you doing anything with food that they might be able to stick their fingers in god forbid you be able to grow food and sell it to your friends in a private organization hopefully that's going to be more and more and more good news coming out of rhode island 
Some of the other stories we're watching using hashtag good news next week. Spanish man tires of waiting for the telecoms to wire his town so he does it himself. And that's a really interesting long read. And India just planted 50 million trees in 24 hours. And thanks to everybody who submits some of these good news next week stories. Again, you can do it on Twitter using hashtag good news next week. But if you're not on the controlled social networks, we applaud you for making it this far without ever having to sign up for them. And remind you, you can always just email me. Love to hear from you, james at mediamonarchy.com. Hope you're still in cool, both physically and mentally and emotionally, as the world wants you to go crazy. So they're trying to get order out of the chaos they're providing. But again, we ain't going to fall for it. This has been Good News Next Week, number 28 for the week of July 25th, 2016. I am James Evan Pilato reminding you, as always, another great saying from Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care.